Good morning. Well, there's, there's not a whole lot of an update other than the figures that have come out uh, earlier this week. Uh, as the Minister has just announced um, the Copthorne Durham, that we let that tender yesterday, so that's pleased to have that organised. Um, we're still working with the owners and the insurers on the Clarendon, which is just behind us. Um, that's taking a little bit longer than, that, than we would have liked, but big tall building, a lot of money in it, and uh, so it's pretty important to get that decision making uh, as good as we can. We've got an excess in the Sierra Days now, uh, just over 90 buildings that are completed, either on the ground, made safe or partially demolished. There's still a lot of activity going on in the red zone. Uh, as I'm sure if you look through the fences you'll observe that, a lot of trucks, still a lot of activity going on. So, happy to take it. In total it's 360 now since uh, the 22nd of February. So that's, when Roger says down, it means partial, full or make safe work done on those buildings. Um, so that number is still climbing. What's the 90? The 90, I think it's 93 is, is what's been done since Sierra uh, took over. Well, can I think the contract's now been awarded for the COPs, when can we start, do you think, to see demolition again? I'm expecting they will be established on site uh, by Monday. So that's tied in with, with the Riverlands house over the road. We need to make sure that that job's finished to, to, before we can start that one, just, just because of the interaction between the different contractors and vibrations are going to start to occur around there. It's an 81 day um, deconstruction which is pretty good for the uh, type of building it is. Hmm. Yeah. What's the method being used? It's conventional deconstruction. The, um, the time difference between a, an implosion option and uh, also the money difference was very, very small. And, and given there is always a risk with an implosion option around ground shock effect, a uh, decision was taken to just deconstruct it uh, in, a, in a deconstructing way rather than an implosion. So top down, yes. just bringing it out, yes. just strong. Yes. Has that been clean of bags and... Yes, they, they went through oh, some months ago now. Mm. Just on that implosion versus de uh, uh, conventional methods, um, what I've been made aware of, as uh, um, Warwick's already well aware of, is that um, while they, the implosion itself might take only a few seconds, the preparation time is, is generally very, very long. Um, and, uh, you know, if you, you've got a make sure that you've got enough um, energy stuffed inside the thing in the right places to make sure that it all does happen in those mm. seconds, but it takes, so that the time difference is not great. Is, um, I mean, is implosion pretty much off, off the agenda for most of the work in the... Um... No, no, we, we, we're still, that is still an option on some buildings for, for sure, but um, in addition to what Mr Brownlee's just said, there's also issues around um, safety, you've got to put people inside the building to place the charges, they've got to strip the, the interior fittings out in order to put the charges and the structural elements that need to be um, imploded uh, and so sometimes it is just safer to bring them down with a, a crane or an excavator rather than putting people inside and putting them at risk as well. So, But it's not off the table, um, we had thought that the Copthorne was a good model for um, an implosion but, but it didn't didn't work out that way. So it's still being considered on other buildings. Um, with, with the Clarendon, uh, you mentioned it's taking a little bit longer than <coughs> Why exactly is that? Uh, simply because um, of insurance issues, um, they've asked us to have a look at it again. Uh, is it repairable, is it not repairable? And issues around insurance and owner's wishes. Um, so we're just in discussions with them again at the moment. I mean, surely, surely, I mean, to, to issue the demolition notice in the first place, that the um, Sarah would have come to a position where it was reasonably sure that it was a demolition rather than a repair. No, we, Sarah's at that position at the moment, and we're just uh, allowing a little bit of room for further discussion. Is the demolition of Clarendon Towers tied in with the reopening of Cashel Wall? No, no, it's not. No. So you don't need to take Clarendon Towers? down before you can open no, 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 the largest issue there is the DTZ building where, where the wrecking ball is going at the moment. Warwick, what other buildings are an option for an implosion? Well the Clarendon is one uh, and, and there's, there's two plans on our table at the moment around implosion or conventional. Um, there are one or two other buildings in, in the city that we haven't discounted the option but that, the Clarendon is the most obvious at the moment. Are you able to name the other two? Uh, no, not at the moment. Sorry. 
Crown the Crown Plaza? The Crown Plaza, the owner and the insurer are still working on it. I understand the decision's imminent on that from their point of view. Um, it's not in very good shape. No, it's not in good shape at all. No, not, not at all. So uh, we, we, we haven't formed a view on all buildings at this stage. We're still trying to work around our plan, so that's sort of towards the end of the plan. That just gives a bit more time for the owner and, and the insurers to um, get to a point that they can without us necessarily having to impose <laughs> itself on top of them. Can you give us an update on the demolition of the Grand Chancellor? I understand it has begun, but what's actually happened so far? Begun? Um, well, <laughs> there, there's been engineers in, inside it for some time, uh, operating out of their, their cages up on the crane. Um, there's a planned sequence essentially, there's two buildings lower down um, on the corner of the mall, one's leaning against the car park, so those two buildings are started, they haven't quite started but they are imminent, then the car park and then it'll be into the tower of the building. So in the next few weeks there's a lot of equipment to come off the top of the car park, um, heating and ventilation equipment, all, all equipment associated with running the hotel, so that's got to be removed first. Let time for those two shops to come down, then the car park, and then into the tower. So the car park before the tower. Yes, in order they can place their equipment in a better, better position for them to start demolishing, demolishing the tower. Yes. The car park was also very badly broken as well. well there's two elements of the car park, and, and and that was part of the. We've only found out a week and a half to two weeks ago that that car park was definitely coming down, and, and that's enabled the. Fletchers and uh, their subcontractors to change their methodology in order to make the job go uh, even quicker than it was. Half the car park belongs to the Grand Chancellor though, doesn't it? Like the whole car park, the whole, park, whole car park does. Yes, but they own, they own both, both parts. Now, and now the entire thing is clear to go rather than just that small sliver that's right. Excellent. Laura, can I ask, is there any update <coughs> um, after this morning that you after shock, um, is there any, any more damage at all on the resort? Well, there's more. There's bits, more bits falling off buildings, but there's there's no no significant uh, increase in the levels of damage. No. So it was closed down for two or three hours, and, and now it's back for access again. Mm.